Now, typically on this channel, we cover a wide variety of, you know, game states and things that happen. On the other channels, I don't like the level 1 fiestas because it kind of determines what's going to happen in the game. But in non-Master Plus MMR ranges, as you can see, we have a meeting of randomness. And essentially, I'll tell you exactly what to do when you're in the situation as a jungler because this is happening way too damn much. Honestly, my games, other people's games in the private Discord, the public Discord, all the Discords, everyone is getting invaded or doing invades at a higher clip than they probably should. And in this particular case, this is not necessarily a invade, but it's a level one fiesta. And it's still going on. Our Echo here is who we're following, already has one assist, stays out. Should you have stayed out here at this stage as the Echo? Once you decide to invade, an enemy team also decides to invade, it's an emerald game, everyone here wants diamond, and you get something from it, leave. The Graves, on the other hand, has got nothing. He's okay, he's already where he needs to be, but the Echo is now very compromised in terms of Going back to base and maybe either spending the gold you get from the first blood. Look, here we got an assist, we didn't get a first blood. But now we're going over to the top side quadrant because we see the graves. We're like, aha, we can steal this. You know, that's a possibility as well. And we're just in time to go ahead and snag this blue up. But we don't have our W, which has missing HP, which we can use with the smite. In this case, you would have been better off probably just doing a raptor stud. Now, the reason I say this is because when you have this kind of randomness, it's not uncommon to see top laners, as they go back to top lane, come and check and ward it up. It's just, in this particular case, do we value stealing the blue in a one-time occurrence, then going back to our quadrant and compromising our sequencing? What if the Graves were to just go over here afterwards? What if the Graves has impact here, but you're too busy trying to get level 3 over here? Now, you can see this, and this is the most important thing. The Echo did the blue, does the Raptors, and now will do the red. Prototypically, you're not going to get level 3 from this. The only time you get level 3 from this is if you include the wolves instead of the raptors. Remember that. Two buffs plus wolves gives you level 3. But two buffs plus raptors, eh, unless you actually get kills and assists, does not. Which means, as we finish this up over here... Here, come on, come on. He still doesn't, even with that assist there. Still doesn't. So now you're level 2. No W. No smite for 17 seconds. Going to Krugs. All because of shenanigans level 1 and a bad adaptation on your part to steal his blue. The Graves is going to get to his blue, do the grump and be like, well, that sucks. But what can you do about the inevitable gank that's going to happen on the top lane here? Nothing. You'll be compromised. Unholy compromised. Now the Graves will maybe get something here, go back to base, go down to the bottom side. You'll be down on the bottom side as well, but you won't really have any control because you focus too much on stealing his blue. Because you didn't have your W. It would have been better just to do your raptors. And overall, just don't do this stuff level 1, guys. Watch your entrances. The reason you're seeing more invaders is because of this open map. You're seeing this? This open map here? This is what we're concerned about. We don't want to be in a position where we're allowing Graves, Jarvans, Nocturnes, Malbeths, Shakos, Kindreds, and things like this to run at us in an open field when we're compromised. We are now compromised. Now, this game, we're now on... The red side of the map and doing the red side quadrant but in another game you might be on the blue side well this is still the red side of the map but you might be in your blue buff area and it doesn't matter where right it doesn't matter where you might be and if you are compromisable why are we look at him why you have to ask yourself at this stage you absolutely must head over to vakayu.gg. I have a free jungle improvement resource as well as a dedicated program where we have jungle video courses, jungle coaching, coaching VOD libraries, weekly free video content seen nowhere else, as well as Q&As and patch note rundowns, as well as a private jungle discord. And if there's one thing I'm good at, it's making junglers reach their goals as we saw with the record number of people hitting them at the end of season 13. If you want to climb faster than anyone you know, jungle diff every game you play, click the link below or head to vakayu.gg. Now I get 612 on pocket. I can easily just go back to base, grab a dark seal, get some control woods, go to the bottom side, and try to do something bottom lane. I know sums were burned from the pike. Obviously, we can see the Draven still has his sums. Keep track of that, ping it out in chat, uh, time it, everything when you have level one shenanigans. But I had this in a coaching session earlier today as well with someone who wants to be Emerald. He just peaked platinum one. And I said to him in a very similar scenario, why didn't you just go back to base after Krugs? It was later in the game, but why didn't you go back to base? He was like, well, can I just walk to the bottom side quadrant? You could. But now you've got Raptor's Krug sequencing, right, up. And you're going to walk all the way across to do Wolves Grump. 
down, now you've got the worst possible thing, where you're going to have a Krug camp spawn, right, and a Wolf camp spawn, and there's no connection between the two. And you really don't want that. But also, you know Graves is on top side, go back to base, get an item advantage, go all the way down here, you've got this blue side quadrant, you're going to control this bottom scuttle, and you've got a lane that you can potentially gank. That's noble, which I would like to do. And it's better and easier to do that when you have some sort of itemization advantage versus having nada, which is what he has in this case. So, Graves obviously realizes his blue's gone. If you watch this channel and any content, you know my reaction to that is, oh, well, that sucks. So anyway, I carried on jungling because what else are you going to do? You're not going to get it back. Now the Graves can't do the, the route through the wall. That was built pretty solid. Uh, as we see the Urko here, there's a potential dive that's possible, but like, well, you know. What do you think he did? Excuse me. <laughs> what do you think he did? Graves. Like, very clearly, even if he did red side quadrant into your blue, he's not here anymore. Since when would he have done his blue side, stolen your blue, and gone back to the, the, the red side over here? It's literally impossible. Because we saw him at 115 go up. He had to have done this, done this, and pieced out. If you think that's what happened, that's not what happened. Because by the time... He's finished his red side quadrant with a Q stud and gone to your blue. You might even run into him. Your blue was gone a long time ago. So there's no reason for you to think that he's still on the side. But that's also why as an Echo, being compromised sucks. Or any jungler, right? Being compromised at level 2 there in Krugs. What if the Graves had vision and saw this and decided to cut up after the red side quadrant and just invade you on Krugs and you're level 2 with no smite? You're doomed, right? You're doomed. And this is the kind of shit we're trying to avoid. So when you have these level 1 environments, these level 1 chaos zones, uh, just... Be a little bit wary about your adaptive pathing and things like that, and don't put yourself in a position to be made undone by Graves, Shinshaos, and meta junglers. Oh, Shinshao. Very evil jungler at the moment, yeah. Nothing's as broken as Brand in this patch. I'm sure it'll be hot fixed at some point when you guys watch this. But yeah, when you're an Emerald player, you have a bit of an ego. No offense. Maybe you don't. If you don't, then you'll be Diamond. But just understand that there's nothing about the MMR range that's holding you back. Nothing. Um... You know, why was this not a gankable lane for us? You know, like this kind of stuff, right? Like, why couldn't we try and abuse the pike? Why couldn't we try and abuse the draven? Why could, like his flash now, okay? Everything's up, ignore the frames, it's just a replay glitch. Everything's up, but you got a Tom Kench with an Echo W layered onto each other. That's a guaranteed cleanse flash. And if he doesn't, it's a guaranteed kill. Ignore anything else right now. I know you're looking at this. I know you're looking at the Cinevia as a free kill. I know you're looking at the graves. But basically, you as the Echo know full well this guy's sequenced up. You ping it, you ping it, you ping it, you say, Gallo, please hover down. I have shit to do in the bottom lane. End of story. But shadowing this is not necessarily wrong. But at the same time, I don't even think we should be on the scuttle crap right now. I think we've got full control over this. I think you should be going straight for the Draven. So as a total Emerald focus, as this is meant to be a complete coaching for Emerald jungling, if you have level 1 nonsense, which I guess a lot of you are having... This is how we would play it. However, if you're a regular game where you just get leashed, you do boof, 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 boof. It's 4 minutes 03. You know, let's just assume you've done a full clear, you've done the scuttle. You're in a similar situation. You should still be able to gank this lane at 3 minutes 34 minutes. Uh, yeah, but in that range for the same results. So nothing changes, okay? Nothing changes. And from the Graves' point of view, you're tracking. Imagine if you didn't track where the echo began because you went leashless and you got a wandering adventure here. You'd be in the same situation. So he's getting baited. No, oh, he's not getting baited. He's getting gifted a free kill because the Galio was like, let's actually see what he did. You have all the power in the world and you choose to do that. Nivia strop. Echo now holds. Goes to the top side. Telegraphs everything. Graves knows he can go to the bottom side quadrant, do everything. Echo knows now, hey, grubs are up, but I haven't based. Graves knows, hey, my quadrant's under control, I can go back to base and I can contest the grubs. Now Echo's gonna do his Krugs, not grubs, and go back to base. Finally buy, ooh, he's gonna stay out even longer. This is gold, Evelyn. Uh, this is gold, uh, a uh, gold Evelyn. Gold Mumu on this channel, gold Mumu, the gold Mumu. Stayed out with 7,000 gold. Graves doesn't even go for it. Guy, you saw an Echo not buy, go topside. Which means you know he started there, because you have the timers now. You know he's going to do that shit and go back to base. You know you've done this shit and you're going back to base. But you know you have itemization. And a Dirk. 
Why aren't we going straight to it? Why aren't we saying, hey, Echo, I want to fight you because if you stayed after doing raptors and krugs, we're going to fight on this thing and I'm going to win because I have item advantage. As an Emerald Jungler, you've got to start to have that real, not, you see, that's where the ego comes from, but not ego, but just that real strong map control. See, now, I literally, against the Graves, last night, with one of my off-meta picks, got five grubs to one. And he destroys me 1v1. You know why? Because he played like the Echo, and he played like this Graves. He fell back to this quadrant early without a reset, went back to base. I was the Graves... Ironically, in a very identical situation. You know what I did? I left base, I just did them immediately. I knew that the Echo, in this case, had to go back to base. It was a Graves against me, but it's an Echo against this guy. Therefore, I have free grubs. I'm going to take them quickly while I have their free real estate, just in case he decides to contest. By the time he contests, they're gone. Fall back to my blue side quadrant, sequence down. I can counter gank him if he chooses. Or if he decides to show up top lane for whatever reason, I can cut and do a dragon, I can cut and counter juggle, I can cut and dive, etc, etc, etc. Exactly the same scenario happened to me yesterday. But I didn't do my blue side quadrant before the grubs. I took them first. Because now I have a logical flow afterwards to dominate the game. Whereas this Graves now, it's a bit, it's a bit janky and weird. It's what the Echo does with this information. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, doesn't even step into the W for shield. Okay, but well, we do get the flash kill. We'll take it. Okay, W. Okay. Well, we witnessed some things here today, and uh, it's been very interesting, to say the least. Whew, close. But yeah, you see what I'm saying, right? Now the Graves has timers and can counter jungle. And the Echo has given him this control, the control he shouldn't have at all. And yet, I feel like the Graves also doesn't deserve it. You know what I mean? Like, the Echo's definitely compromised, but he's compromised himself. The Invade and the level 1 fighting ruined any sort of flow he had to this game. And even though he did come out all right, he didn't take control of the situations he could have. And now, because his back timer was off, he's going to lose everything here. Graves shows up, obviously, we get our Krugs. But the Graves hasn't really fully abused the Grub Snack, you know? Like, the counter-jungling here is good, but in my mind, it's more about the counter-jungling and the counter-ganking here. Because if he did what I said, and he saw the Echo here, guess who's cutting through and counter-ganking? Graves. Guess who gets a double kill? Graves. Guess who now gets to shove up, take plates, take a dragon, and because he killed the Echo, potentially either counter jungle here and kill Echo again, or if Echo goes to the top side, get free stuff and kill bottom lane again. You know, or just fall back to your camps and then counter gank the Echo if he does come down again. Like, it just sits, it slots in perfectly. The Graves are the perfect, even though he randomly did this nonsense counter jungling early, he got a nice gank off, he took this quadrant for the second time, he went back to base, he had all the tempo in the world because he saw the Echo go up here with no buy. He, Free grubs, free sequence down, free counter gank, free counter jungling, free dragon, free second grubs. You're looking at 60 0 plus a dragon, it's GG. Honestly, it's GG. However, because we're an emerald and he didn't do those things, the enemy jungler didn't really make use of that. And that's the problem. See, the Echo didn't get punished in the way that the Echo should have been punished. And thus, the Echo is still in the game and still is 1 0 1 and still able to kind of do a few things. Thing is, though, Graves is now 2 0 0. And even though Echo's 1-0-0, zero, zero, we're down 500 gold. We see this fight here. Tomcat is very strong, by the way. But, you know, it's Pike, so he deserves all the pain in the world. Uh, that hook does miss. Echo W is tragically... Oh! Okay. It, it looked kind of shitty. And then, uh... Tom Kench. So, cool. Nice rotation. We take that gank. Now we're going deep. Okay? And at this point, we don't know where the Graves is. Oh, I think, man... You, like, this is, a, but you don't know the Graves is going to, like, you have no idea the Graves is going top lane. You have no clue as an Echo. And you don't know. And the guy's going to come out of base for some reason with Umbro Glaive, but, like, he's going to come out with huge atomization spikes. So I'm more interested in just securing the Scuttle Crab. You know, if I can take his red, I'll take it. But, you know, I might look a little bit with plants to see what I can do. You know, I'm not looking to be too aggressive where I'm only getting Krugs and things like this. But we rotate to the mid lane. Pike rotates to the mid lane. That W does miss. That one was not good. Uh, Graves shows up out of base. Oh, not out of base. Off the top side. And now we're in the middle of nowhere getting eviscerated. You know, like, is this worth Krugs? Like, you got to gank off. I don't know if Graves is coming down. Why did I do my Scuttle Crab? Mine. 
take my blue quadrant, and then I'll loop back based upon what Graves does so I can position myself to either capitalize on a dragon if he goes topside, counter gank him if he shows middle bottom lane, like give myself a bit of uh, distance, you know, like just take some space away from the relationship, two jungles need some space apart, let me see what you're doing, then we can reconnect later on and we'll have a good old-fashioned fist fight. But it's just like, Graves goes topside almost for no reason though, like you know Echo's down here. Why do you go topside, you know? This guy does all of this shit, and he knows that the Echo hasn't taken his camps. Now we see the Echo here, immediately in my mind, I'm thinking, well, if he kills a Pike, he might go straight for the Dragon. Gale's got ultimate as well. You know, my, my red side camps might be taken. And because the Echo's pathing was terrible, the Draven shows up to help him out, right? Over here. Da -da -da. Terrible pathing. Pull it out, don't get spotted. Uh, also, just go for the red if you're going to go for the red. Like, why is he even going up? See, this is Emerald problems. You're noticing that the sequencing directions, the quadrant controls, the back time is, and where you go, it's all better than Platinum and below, but it's still significantly far away from Diamond. You cannot blame the MMR for these decisions. This is on you guys, right? So think about that as an Emerald jungler. And consistently replicating that gets you to Diamond. And making that accuracy of decision making spot on gets you to Master Team. And that's the problem here. See, now we're forced into this rotational game, but again, 80% rule. Do I have 80% chance of killing the Pike or the Anivia, you know, before Graves rotates? Probably not, therefore I'm not going to rotate. What do you do instead? You just hold the waves. Hold the waves, deny the plates, look back your blue side, and assess. And we didn't do that. And thus Graves gets a free Dragon. Good for him. Good for him. Not good for the Echo, though. Now Graves does Raptors, goes mid lane and holds that one here. The Pike's going to be rotating to the Galio again. Echo now does blue, walks into the river. Why? We've done one buff. Why are we even bothering with this? There's no reason to bother with this at all. You've lost control, my friend. You've lost complete control of this game. He's gone to the bottom side to do his blue Gromp Wolves. What would you think about doing here? I'm sure most of you verbalized it or internalized it. What do you think about it? Yeah, you know? Two camps, plus some grubs that I think I can fight over because I got Rocket Belt. Not a huge fan of that. I think you should just go Storm Surge. Well, at least, you know. Phew. Echo, Echo's a little fringe here. You got the Lich Bane, the Nash's Tooth. You got the Rocket Belt in there, second and third. You know, you got the Storm Surge as well. We're still waiting for a lot of champions to get like a dedicated core build path. The main channel will deal with that when that time comes. But regardless, you have an itemization spike, right? It's fine. It's solid. It's okay. I still think Storm Surge is, is better to go, but, you know. Now we've gone to the bottom side to take blue, to cut up to this, and the, and the Graves isn't thinking about the Grubs. The Graves is just going to the bottom side, he's not thinking about objective domination. The Nivea is like, I really want these. Should you obsess over objectives that are, like, like, should you die for these? No. But at the same time, it's objective control. Like, the Graves didn't even go up, like, okay, the next thing I expect the Echo to do after death is to go top side because the Grubs will be there, therefore I will collapse with my team, kill him, take all the Grubs, all six. Then we can go to the mid lane and shove it out. And if bottom lane is ganky, well, I translate that to a gank, and now I can live in his jungle. Now we can push his turret down. And you can start to elevate the game state quite nicely. And instead, he's gone to the bottom lane here. Never gets a kill. There we go. Tom Kench. Pistol Voyage. And Echo gets three grubs. And I don't think guy who leaves the base and goes blue, uh, wrapped his grubs, should get away with it. There's the bottom side, might as well do this. Obviously, track the Trundle. Uh, all right, then. Trundle is not interested. I'm seeing this a lot, though. People are figuring out the items and, like, staying in base a lot longer thinking about the items. See? Now we lose our Krugs. Grace is still there, so we could do more, but we don't know where Trundle is. So, yeah, there you go. Obviously, the freeze here is huge. Force is this. So, goodbye, Darius. Goodbye, Darius. Because Trundle has no choice, right? No passive on Anivia still. This is something we could do. Obviously, you have to pay attention to the Pike Rooms. Uh, there's the Anivia passive coming back up, but that's a lot of damage. Galio plus Echo. And uh, Graves. Here it is. The Q against the Anivia wall. Did you see that? That's what I'm showing you. The Q against the Anivia wall. He gets an extra bounce on the... There you go. Watch this. See the little short change on the back of that Anivia wall? Gets double proc damage, beautifully done. Kills the Galio. Echo's forced to ult. Pike is rotating again. And. Turns back in and uses passive proc. Runs away, goes back in. Has no smite. Graves has smite. 
Doesn't use it, gets it anyway. Now the Omega fisting each other. Darius is chasing the Nivea. The fact that the Graves has done this rotational thing multiple times this game is huge, right? He looks at it, he sees it, he moves, he cuts off, he actually makes shit happen. It's, it's really nice to see. But the Echo really hasn't been thinking about the Graves as much, and the Echo, sorry, the Echo hasn't been thinking about the Graves as much, but the Graves has been thinking about the Echo, albeit incorrectly. But I will take a guy that's right four times out of ten, than a guy that's zero out of ten because he wasn't even taking the test. He was absent. So be a lot more like the Graves when you think about this kind of stuff, Versus just ignoring it like the Echo. And you know, the Echo Storm bottom line, it took the blue. Yeah, the Echo Storm started red and he took the blue again. But like, you taking one blue, level one, and then taking another blue later on, it, that doesn't compromise or win a game. You know what I mean? Full quadrant counter jungling, stealing objectives under a guy's nose, you know, cutting off with a counter gank like the Graves has done a few times. That's where you want that impact. So the, the Echo is 2 1 1, but he is down 700 gold now. And his jungling has not been so good. Graves is out of base. And Nivea will just avoid that, that Echo W. Get the stun off here. Is a lot of damage though. There you go. That's fine. We'll take it. Here's Pike in the zone. Graves is showing up. Tom Ken shows up as well. Darius is top lane. Echo's going to go in onto the Pike here. He's forced to ult out just in case Pike ults him. I don't necessarily think he would have. But uh, you know. Caution is better than not having caution. Pike is eaten alive. Taunted. And killed. Don't feel bad for him. Draven gets to shove this down here. In the meantime, while this is happening, the uh, Graves is going on the Galio here. He is strong enough to kill most people at this stage. Uh, obviously, it's a full grab to do. I don't even want to understand that. I'm not even going to pretend to think I'm understanding what's going on there. But even with two grubs, you see they're able to rinse this turret with a trundle. And sure, they're getting kills here, which is great. But, uh, you know, the Galio's dead and there's a dragon on the map. And I think Graves will have to give this up just purely because they've got numbers. Yeah, okay. So at this point of the game, at this point of the game, when you're doing these objectives and you're pushing waves and you're using the grubs and the heralds and the dragons, not a lot has changed into general macro. But what you will notice, my friends in Emerald, is that the grubs will make a big difference around 15 to 20 minutes, okay? One death against a five or six grub team, even four grubs, can mean an open inhib for you. And if you're not controlling the herald and the dragons and everything else, while the snowballing component of the game is down earlier, it's, it catches up later on. So before we'd have an 8 minute, 10 minute Herald, right? And that would do a lot of stuff. That could take a top turret, open the game up already. Snowball does this. Now that that doesn't happen, but it's almost like that period of time has just been placed later. And it's not replacing it, it's just placed on top of. So 15 to 20 can go a lot, lot quicker when you make a mistake due to the nature of the grubs and maybe if they have heralds or they have mites uh you know you're behind in gold anyway and i've seen this a few times you saw this on the main channel video the shin Shao was had a very quiet moment against uh the the hack room they got one pick and with six grubs doof 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 literally and one push at like 16 minutes and now what if you don't have wave clear now what if you're super far behind that's where that snowball catches up right so it's just delayed be wary of that because look at the trundle already. You see what I'm saying? Like, you can see it happening. Uh, the Anivia is also going here. Like, the map is starting to move quickly. So the 15 to 20 minute mark is really where things start to happen. And now, obviously, Gallo is doing things. Um, he's going to, you know, try and get... Up the he's farming, and he's looking to make plays. He's looking to use his lead. It's 5 0 now. Echo's 2 on 5 Sure, he's got some assists, but he's really not impressed upon any of us, any sort of, like, power level jungling. Now, it's a 2v1 on the Herald. He's just going to go for it. Don't know why you would. Waiting for the team. There we go. That's better. But, as you know, I'm not a fan of randomly contesting objectives and dying for it in a game that's, you know, kind of equal. Um, Darius is finally showing up. Galio is finally showing up. But uh, I'm more of the mind, like, I'd like to push this. Like, okay, they're on Herald. Push the wave. Use your full grubs. Take the turret. You know, move down here. Take all of this. Push this out, take this one as well. There's no Baron. They're going to take the Herald and base. You can probably get two turrets, a whole bottom side quadrant watered up and set yourself up for the next dragon. Maybe you win that fight because you've got the vision advantage, you make a pick, and then you can Baron. So that's what you th should think about as an Echo in this situation, not trying to contest a Herald. The Herald is not that great. Most of the time it glitches, and 
it's great if you have mites and you're just looking to end the game and push, but in a, in a neutral game, there's no real reason for you to do this. Darius goes mega deep. Echo's W's have not been that great this game. A few have hit, but overall it's not that good. Um, we are stunned there by the Nivea Force to flash out. We have the Draven Kiting back here. Ignite is killing him. Dra Darius is running away. Graves obviously died in the fight. And here you go. Trundle with the buffs and uh, two grubs. See what I'm saying? So while grubs are not that massive, imagine if they had six. Imagine if they have a split push with six and your positioning is completely off all the time. Huge, yeah? Absolutely huge. Really, really, really adds up. And when it comes to being an emerald and dealing with split push, a lot of that is, is not allowing the game to get to this point, as always. You know, cliche advice. But it's also about how you rotate to fights when people are out of position. And the Echo hasn't done that. The Graves did. The Echo hasn't. Now the Echo's in a 3v2 here. The Pike goes for the kill. We get to send the Pike. That's fine. We're going to get that auto, auto attack. Uh, Q plus passive proc. We're going to ult out. We're going to run away. And we get a freebie. Darius is now chasing the Anivia. Now the Herald is being used. And this is a free inhib. See, the Herald is strong here. Because we've got two grabs. We've got an inhib. Jump inside. Okay. Alright. See what I'm saying? Bye bye. They really need to fix it and make it more intuitive. In the meantime, Trundle is splitting on the top side. All of these fights are ongoing, but the Trundle is just splitting using two grubs to smash through bases. And as a jungler, you're like, well, it's Emerald. I'm 418. I should have some sort of. You have no power. You have no power as Echo in this game. And unfortunately, what this does is gives the dragon to the graves. All right. Nothing happens for a little bit. Everyone stalls out. Remember, two inhibs being down here is really good for the red team to scale. They have a Senna. They can scale nicely. They have an Echo. This is always very good for them. There we go. There should be a dead Draven. Don't have to ult, but cool. We'll do it. Meanwhile, Trundle's doing this. Now, Galio and everyone full commits. And out of position is the Echo who dies. Trundle walks on over, has TP as well if he needed it. Echo just missed position. If you can count to five, you will win and climb to Diamond. You can climb to Challenger with it, honestly. Hey, do we have more numbers than the enemy team, yay or nay? And the only time you would ever compromise that is if you're like 20 kill bomber, you total 1v9, and you know you mechanically can do that, but very few people actually have that skill. And because of this death and this random reposition, we die. Like, we had a good ability here to decompress the map and just fall back to camps, push out some waves, farm some supers. You know, they didn't have the numbers to go to the Baron. We could easily contest it. We just had to control the map a little bit, do it again, do it again, and win the game. But everyone's always impatient. And I'll, I will be honest, it's kind of tough for the Anivia. Um, kind of confused as to why we're fighting. Do we want to be fighting here? No. Talked about this in the coaching classes uh, last week. So obviously in the private Discord if you want some of that stuff. Good juice. And basically now, it's a grubbed up, barroned up, two dragoned up, blue team, who are like this, versus the Tomcats, the Echo, you know, and the Galio, who are just detached from how the game needs to be played. And they just like get absolutely steamrolled in the base here. And you're going to say, what do you do in this situation as Red Team? Again, solve the actual disease, not the presenting symptoms, okay? Right, a cough could mean many, many things, but if you don't know what disease it belongs to, you can't cure it. And a lot of the time, when maps are like this in your games, it's not only because you made mistakes early, we always do that, but it's because the moments you could have used to actually come back, or to stall out, you didn't. Like, all of these fights where they died were pointless. What you want to do is just control your camps, have deep vision, be very, very patient, wait for that numbers advantage. If Trundle Split pushes without his team, which he will, kill him. Now you have numbers advantage. If he does it again, kill him. Sure, you might lose a dragon. Sure, you might lose a herald. You might even lose a baron. But if you consistently have numbers advantage and can keep feeding on those ways and pushing out the camps, it, you're not going to, uh, you're not going to end up in this situation, right? And then from that, 12.9k gold on the echo, 15.3 on the graves. Graves played much better. Wasn't perfect, but it was much better. His mind was in the right place. He just needs to work on execution. The Echo had both problems. So, 
Hopefully that does help a little bit. It is very difficult to kind of always condense these things as much as possible in a short time frame, but... There you go, Emerald Jungling is chaotic, but it's still on you, the jungler, to control the games, especially when you're playing a meta jungler. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, I will see you all in the next one.